So now we're going to start with some flexion pivots. It's really important to work on uh, some setup for this beforehand. One is table height. You want to make sure the table is high enough where it's hitting you mid-thigh. Part of what happens with pivots is you need to be able to shift back and forth. And if the table is too high or too low, you'll end up like leaning way over your patient. So making sure where they're lined up is going to be really important. Femur length and size of the patient make a big difference. Remember, when I do the setup, I try to put a pillow underneath here at first, that way you're not getting too much side bending. You cannot have a pillow, but you just have to adjust for that side bending. Next is, and I'm just gonna change my camera for a second, is setting yourself up so you don't have to do as much work. So you'll notice that I get the femurs and they're just coming over the table a little bit. A lot of times when people do pivots, they're lifting and trying to control the movement. If you can use this part of your thigh and put it right here, your hands will be, be able to relax more and you will be able to flex the spine. So we're going to start at L5S1 and work our way up. And as we work our way up, we're going to be able to keep the leg on the table. You can get your hands this way. But as you know, you should just be shifting this way. You shouldn't be lifting things up. If you lift things up, you're bringing in too much energy and the patient is working too hard. I'm going to change the camera angle again. So here we are. When we do the flexion pivots, we're feeling the inner spine of space. Is there motion? Isn't there motion? We palpate down at L5S1. We have the legs on a sliding surface, and then we feel flexion at L5S1. Go up to L4, L5, and back down to neutral. L3, L4. So you notice there's a little bit more flexion with each segment I go up. You're just asking yourself, is there movement? Isn't there movement? Is it painful? Is it not painful? If there is a restriction, you can do what's called the pabum, which is an opening or a glide. Very difficult to feel, but we can see if there's increased resistance or not. So if I get at L3, L4 and it feels restricted every time I move it, then I can come in, I can bracket my fingers on either side, I can fix the top, have my hand here, and produce opening. And see, do I feel that move well or not? Again, in the world of manual therapy, it is about end feel, but I don't want you to make you think that you can feel like a bee's knees bend, but there are times when you're going to be able to feel a little bit more motion than others. So with this spinal model, all we're doing is trying to fix one layer and glide the other to see what the resistance of motion is. Realizing we're going through two inches of tissue here and it's going to be very hard to feel that glide, but if we're getting ourselves honed in on a level, we can actually get an idea on how that patient is responding to that motion. So we can figure out how we would modulate that and to make them into an either graded mo motor program, uh, a, a graded mobilization program, so we can get them walking or moving better. So let's start with those flexion pivots.